Welcome back everyone, it's Gigabeef here, and today we're going to be checking out the big boy helmets in Escape from Tarkov in the second part of our two-part video series on helmets and face shields, so stick around and let's get going. If you haven't checked out part 1 covering the basics, head hitboxes and a full breakdown of the helmets compatible with both headsets and visors at the same time, then you can check that out here if you want to watch that first. This video will build on what we discussed there, but instead today we'll be moving our focus onto the helmets in EFT that are not compatible with both a visor and a headset at the same time. All of the best helmets, from an armour class perspective at least, block headset usage and have high sound reduction as well, i.e. they are worse than having nothing on your head at all, but they have high protection to counter these disadvantages. Compared to their class 3 face shield brethren, you can actually take a decent shot to the face with most of these helmets and survive multiple shots of medium tier rifle ammo like BT or M856A1 or a great many SMG rounds. One thing that is particularly noticeable about all of these helmets is that they all have ears protection. This means no funny business with dying to random ear hitbox shots from the front or needing to buy specialist parts to cover this, you get this automatically. Something that I forgot to mention last time was that ears protection is even better than it looks on paper, due to the mechanics of the head hitbox again and the angle at which incoming fire is likely to strike this hitbox means that you can expect to see more ricochets than other parts like eyes or jaws, as the shots are just striking the edge of the hitbox when facing the enemy. Revisiting No Food After Midnight's blog for a second on this subject, he states, if a bullet strikes a helmet within a certain range of angles, the round has a chance to ricochet determined by how shallow the angle is as well as the ricochet chance of both the ammo and the helmet. If a ricochet occurs, it is the same as the helmet stopping the penetration as far as the penetration calculation is concerned. We can easily see the ricochet chance of the various helmets because that is available in the game, however many players don't know about the round ricochet chance, primarily because it's not on the main ballistics page on the wiki, but you can find this information aggregated on each calibre's summary table. However for practical purposes, most of the rounds that players use that are armour penetrating tend to sit in the 35-40% to category, which is only one part of the calculation, along with angle and helmet ricochet value as we spoke about a second ago. Onto the actual helmets then, and this time we have a handy table to refer to the information because there are more stats to worry about. In the lighter helmets, typically you either die outright anyway, or get saved from one shot and then the face shield, helmet or both are trashed. That is not the case with these larger defensive versions, as they are made of better materials, have a higher armour class and have a higher durability overall. We're going to compare the LSH Z2DTM, the Altin, the Reese T, the Masker, otherwise known as the Killer Helmet, the Vulcan, and also the new Tegila Welding Mask. So starting with the baby of the big helmets, the inventively named LSH Z2DTM is class 4 on the helmet itself and class 4 on the visor. With combined materials on the helmet, it actually has the joint highest effective durability of the lot, although at class 4 that doesn't necessarily mean too much. Remember that to get the effective durability of an armour, which takes the material into account too so that we're able to compare them evenly against each other, you have to take the durability number that you see in game and divide it by the corresponding figure in this table of destructibility here. Given the face shield gives full visibility and hence uses the glass material type, this gives the visor a relatively low effective durability, at least against others in this tier. For context, with class 4 over the whole head, you'll be protected from low tier rounds and have some protection against middling rounds like 545BT which has a 55% chance to pen level 4 on the first hit at full armour durability, so you get half a chance to block that anywhere on the head. The issue here is that anything with more pen and you quickly reach the 90% pen chance, so personally I don't think this helmet is worthwhile after the early stages of the wipe, when you probably won't be buying it anyway as it's sold by Ragman 3. Right now it's around 60,000 rubles on the flea market. The face shield itself can be bought from Ragman 4 or bartered for 3 plexiglass of Ragman 3 and it's about 20 to 25,000 rubles on the flea market currently. There are two additional pieces for this helmet which are the cover and the avantail. The cover does nothing stats wise but it's supposed to stop the glare from the shiny helmet and is very cheap whereas the avantail is a little bit more interesting. This is a piece of level 5 armour that only protects one specific and weird hitbox, the lower nape. The lower nape is a new hitbox that was added sometime around mid 2021, and the highest profile case being Landmark getting killed whilst facing an enemy in this specific hitbox, and testing it a bunch but it appears to be really inconsistent and unintuitive. As far as I have seen, there was inconclusive testing done on this topic, but it may be that this hitbox being at the bottom of the head in general, clips into the thorax and so most of the time it never actually gets hit. Either way, if you really want to protect this, you can with the Avantail at class 5 for 20,000 rubles. I'm not aware of any other armour that protects this hitbox and it's so unlikely to get hit there that it doesn't change the verdict for this helmet overall. 
Then you have a choice to make between the remaining helmets, which is the Vulcan 5 with class 4 on the visor and class 6 on the helmet, the Altin or the Reese T with class 5 on the helmet and the face shield, or the Masker 1SHCH, which comes in either the regular Olive version or the Killer branded version, with level 4 on the helmet and level 6 on the face shield. The Tegila welding mask is a little bit different, which we'll go into later, but it's effectively class 5 all over except for the back of the head, so not as complete as the others, but still definitely worth looking at. Let's start with the Vulcan, which is the one that you tend to see the least. The most glaring thing about this helmet is the class 4 face shield, which does give you a full view of the screen, but given that the eyes and jaws hitbox are the cause of death so often, it's then kind of overkill to have class 6 on the top, nape and ears. This helmet is not cheap, sitting at 160k at the time of recording for a new one, and the face shield at about 40 to 45,000 for a total of 200k overall. There is also a barter of Ragman 3 for 7 plex for the face shield, but this one isn't economic at the moment. Both the face shield and the helmet itself have great overall durability, but one further downside that is actually pretty serious are the stat debuffs. Between the helmet and the visor, which both have their own negative debuffs to turn rate, move speed and ergonomics, we end up with minus 42% turn rate, minus 30% ergo and minus 7% move speed. Minus 42% turn speed is pretty funny when combined with Zabralo's minus 21% as you basically have to buy a second desk for your extra large mouse pad as your PMC turns like a turret on a tank. But obviously you could just work it out and adjust your mouse sensitivity if you did really want to run that as a combo. The minus 30% ergo debuff on the other hand is pretty nasty, affecting your weapons handling in game due to the armour and the minus 7% move speed isn't ideal either. The Vulcan overall has the worst stat debuffs out of any of the combinations and this combined with the class 4 face shield and high price makes it practically unusable for most players at the moment. Next let's take a look at the Masker. The Olive and Killer varieties are identical statistically, unlike the Killer body armour, and you can mix and match either helmet with both face shields if you want to look super goofy. Now in my opinion, the Masker is way more usable than the Vulcan, with a class 4 helmet, but a class 6 face shield instead this time. This way around makes much more sense, as the eyes and jaws hitbox are usually facing straight into incoming fire, which is where you want the majority of your armour to be, a bit like a mechanical tank would. The top nape and ears hitboxes are going to have a better chance of giving a ricochet as we said before, so overall you can take a serious beating with the mask of face shield on. Looking at the stats again, both helmet and visor are not super high on durability, but are fairly decent despite being made of steel, which due to the destructibility table leads to lower effective durability. The visor is a little on the low side, but is made up for by being class 6. However, notice that the ricochet chance on both parts is medium rather than high, which is unique to this helmet. This probably matters a little bit more for the helmet itself than the visor, but is only a small difference. Outside of this, the debuffs are mixed. Whilst having the lowest turn and move rate debuffs of minus 6% and minus 3%, it has the second highest ergo debuff of minus 26%, incentivizing you to boost your ergo a little more than you would normally when taking this weapon to preserve some ADS speed if required. A brand new masker helmet is likely to set you back 70 to 75,000, and the olive face shield around 35k, so about 110k total, which actually isn't too bad for what it offers. The killer version of the face shield tends to be more for the pure swag factor, but one upside to the steel material is that they don't cost a great deal to repair. I bought a 14 out of 60 helmet for science, and that only cost around 40,000 rubles, and the visors are dirt cheap to repair at 8k from zero to full. So you won't be getting a big discount buying broken helmets and repairing them, but if you do manage to either survive a raid or get it back in insurance, you'll be able to repair it more cost effectively than buying a new one. Yet again, there's a barter, this time for the Olive Helmet, which is 4 GP coins, and for the Visor is 2 GP coins, so it's usually cheaper to use the flea instead, but it's good to know that it's there for a 100% durability one if needed. I've actually been using this helmet a bit recently myself, and so far I haven't died to a headshot once. Usually the thorax has given up first, even the mighty Sobralo gets destroyed before the face shield got a chance to let a round through. As you can clearly see, one of the biggest downsides to this helmet is the visibility, which laterally is not actually too bad, but on the vertical is absolutely appalling and can kind of throw you off a bit if you're not used to it. Now that we've looked at the Vulcan and the Masker, we can see why players like to use the Alton at least. There is no hitbox with class 4 armour anywhere on the helmet. This makes it much more consistent than the others against a variety of rounds and situations, where you are being shot at from any direction as class 5 protects you against a whole extra segment of rounds that we've discussed before in my regular class 5 armour video, and has a 50% chance to absorb even a 762 BP round. Digging into the stats, we can see that the helmet itself actually has the lowest durability out of all of the helmets here at a mere 64 effective because of the steel armour type and the low base durability of just 45. However, the face shield is pretty good at 100 effective durability, which as we said before for the masker, is probably the more important part and both have a high ricochet chance. 
The combined turn rate is middling bad at minus 25, but the Ergo is actually one of the best at minus 13%, and as we said, you can deal with the turn rate if necessary, but the Ergo is not counterable outside of just spending more on your gun. In terms of pricing, the Altin Helmet is around 120,000 rubles, and the Visor around 45 to 50k, for a total of approximately 165, so it's fairly expensive, but this is to be expected as it's the helmet of choice for many a Shift W player. Barters of Ragman 4, round pliers, tape and regular pliers, which comes out to around 90k very roughly, but obviously depends on the market at the time. However, this is typically cheaper than Altins on the flea. And for a face shield, there's a couple. There's four plexiglasses, six level 20 plus dog tags, and three other Altin face shields for one new one. The plexiglass barter also typically works given the price of face shields. Dog tags are just about worth it as level 20 dog tags sell to therapist for 7,500 rubles, so if you're using higher than level 20, it starts to get worse in value. Three Altin face shields for a new one only makes sense really if you're running them all the time and repairing them, and you have a set that are getting low on max durability. On visibility, the Altin is like a middle ground between the Masker and the fully clear visor of the Vulcan, giving you the characteristic letterbox view. While slightly tighter horizontally than the Masker, the vertical vision makes the overall feel of the Altin much nicer to play with in general if you're not a regular. Okay, okay, so the Altin is great, but what about the Reese T? Well, looking at the stats, it's basically a straight Altin upgrade in every department. It has a much higher durability helmet, as it's not only got more base durability, but the material is switched to titanium instead of steel. The face shield has more effective durability overall by 10%, and the turn rate is the best, barring the masker at minus 14%. Its ergo is the best in class, with minus 11%, and the move speed debuff is jointly first place at minus 3%. So given that it's quite a bit better, and significantly so in some areas, why do we see the Reese T more often in Tarkov? Well this primarily comes down to availability. The Altin is regularly seen on heavily armoured boss guards, such as those around Rashala, Sanitar and Gluhar, whereas the Reese T is so much rarer to find in Raid, and so the flea market prices are very volatile. I picked one up to mess around with for this video for a few hundred k, but checking back now they're nearly a million rubles each. It's good, but it's not that good. The face shields themselves are not much different at 50k, but there are barters for both items that should really be considered first before resorting to spending so much on a helmet on the market. For 5 Aramid, 6 Plexiglass and 1 Kajura, you can barter for a Reese for approximately 150k, and 4 Plexiglass and 1 Bolts for the Visor comes to around 60,000. Overall, with the best of both at around 200,000 rubles, it's more of a contender to the Altin then, if money is less of an issue and you want the best protection overall. Unfortunately, these days Ragman is the highest trade level at 42, and you'll need to reach Ragman 4 to be able to take advantage of these barters. The one helmet we haven't discussed yet is the Tegilla Welding Mask. This comes in two cosmetic designs, Ube and Gorilla, and has a unique profile with total head coverage barring the nape, which means you're not protected from getting shot in the back of the head. It has the same visor shape as the Altin, but with a durability of 40 base and being made of steel, this gives it an overall effective durability of 57, which is really quite low in the context of this helmet's armour. Despite at first glance only being a few points lower than the Altin space shield, no matter where you get hit on the Tegilla mask, this damage comes out of the durability pool of 57, whereas with all of the other proper helmets, you have a visor and a helmet separate. This means you can take a shot to the face, and then the top, nape or ears with two separate durabilities of 100%, whereas with the Tegilla it's like being hit specifically on the face consecutively, which can happen with the larger helmets too, don't get me wrong, but if this doesn't happen, there are scenarios where the Altin will save you where the Tegilla won't. That said, it's cheap to repair, cheaper overall because you don't have to buy two parts for it, and it also has low debuffs at 10% turn rate, minus 10% ergo, and minus 5% move speed. Given it's only found on Tegilla himself, they are on the flea market only, but typically cost around 100,000 rubles, which is actually one of the most cost-effective of the lot, if you want some decent protection, but don't fancy spending 150k or more. For overall performance, it's fairly clear that the Reese T comes top of the list, but the price difference, even with the barters, means that it's hard to choose between itself and the Altin. The Tegilla Mask is great if you want a run and gun face shield that will let you tank a round or two of the good stuff from time to time, but I do believe that given the relatively cheap cost of the Masker, there is a place to run it if you can adjust your playstyle around its limited visibility as the level 6 face shield is incredibly strong. One final topic that can be important before we wrap this one up is around the blindness protection that these helmets give. Most of them give decent protection against flashbangs, which usually comes in the form of a KS-23 shotgun loaded with star rounds and blasted into your face on factory, which is where you might run these helmets more often anyway. The regular helmets range from 10% on the LSH and the Vulcan 5 with their clear visors, to 25% on the Altin, 30% on the Reese T, and 35% on the Masker. However, these helmets still give you the ability to wear a pair of glasses, of which the crossbow are the best out of the regular ones that give you 30% flash protection as well. 
This takes the helmets between 40 and 65% flash protection, which is pretty nice. The Tugila, being a welding mask in a former life, gives 70% out of the box, but with no ability to wear glasses. Well, what does this do exactly, I hear you ask? Well, I tested a few scenarios with nothing at all, just the glasses at 30% reduction, and then the glasses and the killer visor for an additional 35% reduction. No glasses gave a time of 15 seconds for any vision to come back whatsoever, which I determined by moving the mouse around a bunch and recording it as soon as a bright light source was visible. At around 25 seconds, some semblance of regular vision becomes possible at a usable level, and it takes a grand total of 80 seconds for the flash burn to totally fade away. With the crossbow glasses, this reduced the effects down to 10 seconds for any vision to come back, 20 seconds for some kind of regular vision, and 55 seconds to totally go away. This makes sense given the 30% buff, which appears to apply directly to the time of the effect. Using both the glasses and the killer visor, we got to 7 seconds for any vision to come back, which may I note by the way is still a really long time. 15 seconds for regular vision, and 35 seconds for the effects to totally go away. This is somewhat interesting, because I would have expected the flash effects to disappear at 80 seconds, reduced by 30 and 35% for a total of 65%, but this would imply 28 seconds, which is not quite what we see. I've not done extensive testing, but the system appears to be multiplicative in some way, i.e. with 35% from the masker only acting on the remaining 70% from the original glasses once the 30% that they give is removed, leaving you with a combined 54.5% reduction instead. This would give 36.4 seconds, which is much closer to our observed figure of 35, and is within my measurement error. This would in turn mean that the Tegilla helmet though has fantastical anti-blindness properties at minus 70%, however when testing and offline, it appears to have no benefit applied whatsoever. I was so keen to see if this is actually bugged or not that I tried it out in online specifically, where it seems that the Tegilla welding mask at the time of recording does nothing to prevent the blindness effects at all. This bug is submitted to BSG, so watch this space. Given the 70% reduction on the Tegilla mask is not a combination of two parts, we can calculate that if things were working correctly, it should have a 4.5 second delay for any vision, 7.5 for some reasonable vision, and 24 seconds for all the effects to go away, which is actually really strong. So if I am right, and this bug gets resolved, perhaps one day we can run factory and laugh in the face of the KS23 once and for all. If you enjoyed today's video and you want to support the channel, please consider dropping a like, sub or a comment, all are free to do and help out a lot. Also, don't forget to check out the channel's new dedicated music playlists on Spotify, the links for which are in the description. To see when I'm streaming, you can join the Discord and follow me on Twitter. I'm usually live twice a week on Twitch, and once on Friday at 9pm UK time for the Scav Talk podcast with my fellow Tarkov at Church, which is in the description too, and a regular Tarkov stream on Saturday at 2pm UK time. And with all that said, I'll see you next time, and as always, have fun in your raids. Thank <laughs> you.